All right, let me try this again. Okay, there we go. All right. Now I think we're in the house. Okay, now I think we're in there. Okay. Now I think we're back. Let's see where we are now. All right, hold on one second. Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. All right, hopefully this is going to work. Uh, okay, where are we at? All right, now we're good to go. All right, there we go. All right, we're back, we're back, we're back. Now we're back with the live. All right, man. All right. Hold on, let me let everybody know on social media. Hold on. All right. All right, what's up, man? We're back, we're back. Somebody is messing with this stream. Somebody don't want me to get some information out. This ain't never really happened before. This thing just shut down the way it shut down. All right. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about some real stuff tonight, so this ain't never happened, but I'm here. What's up, guys? Everybody come on in the room. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Everybody come on in. All right. The stream is working good now. Um, real interesting. Real interesting. All right, but I'm here. What's up, Buffalo, New York? Shout out to Buffalo. So what's happening, man? We're here. We're back, man. Funny style stuff happening here. Yeah, it's it's... Because it's voting time, they don't want nobody to influence something. They must not want no influencers really putting a wrench in the game. All right? But y'all come on in the room. Everybody come on in here, man. Let's get on in here, Heavy. While you're coming in here, hit that thumbs up button. Hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Mike? Shout out to my dude, Mike. Yeah, all right, look, look, we're here. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for all the people who didn't subscribe. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for all the people who did not subscribe. By the way, like I said earlier, um, guys, we're going to have the FBA flag package available until tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day for the FBA flag package where you get the Foundational Black American package. You get the flag, you get the Ogun juice, you get the Ogun juice pepper spray, mask, socks, hidden colors, not hidden colors, 1804 DVD, avoid the machine book, you get all that for 49 bucks. Tomorrow is the last day, ladies and gentlemen. You need to get your package tonight. Tonight, tonight is the last night. The sale will be over tomorrow. Okay, because we extended it. It was only supposed to be a couple of days. We're in, we're working overtime getting all these damn packages out, which we didn't want to have to do. But so many people were hitting me up like, okay, listen, my stimulus check don't come until Friday, Tyreek. Come on. Y'all, you know, we, I, I work with my folks. I, I know how it is. But Tyreek, listen, niggas hit me up with the sad story. I'm hearing the violin in the back. Listen, brother. I just bought some milk from my babies. Can you please extend? I, mean, I, don't, I don't need to hear the sad story. Y'all got to give me the sob story. <laughs> Listen, I had to buy some milk for the babies. I had to get some lunch boxes and everything. I had to get some COVID masks for my grandmama. Look, all right, brother, I got it. All right, all right. Just give me, just give me a couple of more days. I've been, I got to get some marijuana for my little glaucoma. And black folks love telling you all they damn business. I don't need to know all that. Much respect to you. I don't need to know everything. Listen, Tyreek. I had surgery, man. Eight years ago, I fell down a shaft of stairs at a movie theater. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. That's one thing. Black folks love talking about their pain and suffering. Let's stop that. 
We got to let the world know about the goddamn pain and suffering. Let's not do that. We don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. I want us to get out of that habit. Tyree, you still got that package there? I knew that you had said it was just going to be for two days, but listen, I got ran over by a McDonald's frozen food truck three months ago, brother. My leg is still numb. And brother, I ain't been able to get out here. I'm a rodeo clown and I can't be doing this rodeo thing like I'm supposed to do, brother. So I'm gonna need you to, man, just, I got a little stimulus check coming in a couple of days, brother. Can you just give me just two days, brother? Just, can, can you extend it, brother? Just extend it until I get back up on my rodeo game, brother. I'm out here working out with bulls and cows and everything. I just can't get it right now. All right. Got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. So I try to accommodate people. I try to accommodate your dad. Does, yeah. Yeah. People, uh, people used to do that all the time, even with the, with the movies. Listen, Tyree, I want to buy hidden colors, but listen, my baby daddy left me He He was out here fighting pit bulls and chickens and shit. And then he got a Rico charge. He was hooked in with some Mexicans and then they had went to jail and everything. And it just me and my kids. And you know, I am struggling here. I'm, I'm stripping right now, but one of my breasts, I, I got a shot off in a drive-by, so, <laughs> so I'm struggling right now. I can, I'm only getting half the tips I'm used to getting. Can you, can you have a stream of the movie for a little cheaper? We love telling our sob stories to everybody. We love doing that. We love talking about our pain and suffering. Yeah, dig, and I understand. I want us to get out of the pain and suffering business. I want us to get out of the pain and suffering. You're not supposed to suffer. Black people, we use pain and suffering as a badge of honor. I want us to get out of that. It's not your lot in life to struggle and suffer. Yeah, and I don't want one titty strippers, unitits, hit me up, telling me how, you know, they can't do certain things. All right, you know, when things happen, I understand we make the best of it, but you don't have to, you know, we don't have to go around with the, the pain and suffering stories and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, see. The Democrats are trying to get us to get out there and vote. I've seen a few black folks out here, and this is what we're talking about, voting for clout. I've seen a lot of some black folks out here at voting polls arguing with white supremacists and all that stuff. And I can understand doing that if we're getting something out of it. I can understand if we're doing something. I think out there in South Carolina somewhere, they were out there marching and they all, the bunch of black folks who were marching with the church got pepper sprayed and all this old shit. And, you know, they all, there's some babies that got pepper sprayed and the babies is coughing and throwing up and... Look, going through all of that, if we were getting something out of it, I could see why. But going through the pain and suffering and you ain't getting nothing, fuck that. I want y'all to understand some black folks, I don't want to hear none of this shit about y'all going out here to voting polls and you getting beat up. Fuck that. Because you're getting beat up for nothing. If we were out here getting some tangibles, if they made a promise to give us tangibles, I'd be out there right with you at the voting poll. We'll make sure the bullshit would stop. I'm not out here fighting white supremacists at the voting polls for nothing. We got to sit up here and we got to get knocked in the head so that we can go in here and vote for other people to benefit from us getting beat up no, that's done. We did that in the 60s. That's that John Lewis bullshit. We got to get in good trouble. Good trouble for what? So that everybody can come together as a minority coalition. Man, ain't no damn minority coalition, dude. You out there getting your ass whooped. So these um, people coming in from South America and all these people come in and disrespect your ass. You done got your ass toe up. 
we got all the bumps and the bruises and the jails and all this shit. And all these other groups come in, eating off of us getting beat down. And then when we say, hey, I, my brother, I fought for you. Shut up, nigger. Uh, we ain't doing that no more, guys. A lot of these Negroes out here who are talking about voting, they can't give a logical reason why we should vote. Let's be real. And from what it's looking like, it looks like Trump might win. We don't give a shit. But Trump going, Trump is a racist. So is Biden. So is Kamami. Huh? The Democrats, your strategy of disrespect just didn't work, see? Because it looks like Biden is going to lose. Yeah, that's the thing. Let's go back to that. When we out here, now this is the thing. Even in the civil rights movement, black people were out here getting all the knocks and the bruises and getting beat down and getting the jail time. And we're getting all of these things, all of these negatives, fighting for something, fighting for a symbolic gesture, which is just to vote, just to be voting. That's symbolic. So that everybody else, they don't get symbolisms. They get tangible benefits. When other people come over here with a clean slate, no bumps and bruises, they didn't get knocked on top of the head. They sat on the sidelines watching us get knocked on the upside the head. We do all the hard work. We're all bruised, trying to dust ourselves off. We're staggering and stumbling and not getting anything out of it. All of these other groups come over and get all types of tangible benefits and then turn around and say, well, damn, hey, niggers, you've been here for 500 years. I've just been here for two months and I got a business. I got all of this money. You niggers are lazy. I'm lazy? We're lazy? We just got beat the fuck up. Helping you get here. We, we got our ass whooped for the DACA program. We got our ass whooped for the dreamers and all the all of this stuff, all of these programs, all of these LGBT programs and all of these immigration programs. And we didn't help you get into HBCUs, all these schools we're supposed to go to. You're getting these degrees from these minority set asides that we didn't got knocked in the head about. See? We're not playing that game no more, guys. That game is over. That game is over. We ain't doing that. And niggas out here who are getting beat up for nothing, that's stupid. That's very dumb. I'm all about fighting the white supremacists. That's a great fight. I ain't got no problem with that. But damn it, we gonna get some out of it. Damn if I fight white supremacists for some other folks to come in and benefit off the shit. That's what we're not gonna do. Damn if I fight all these white supremacists so that other people can come in and disrespect after I get all the bumps and the bruises. Yeah? It's not going to happen. That's not going to happen at all. And when you ask people, what are we voting for? Nobody can give you a logical answer. It's reduced to trolling, and the Democrats right now, they're so desperate, they know they don't have a strategy. Their whole thing is to, to just troll and try to get sassy niggas who's on the payroll to try to shame black people. They're trying to vote shame us. They get a, a lot of these LGBT Negroes who are hankering for a white zaddy to lay up with. And let me tell you another thing. A lot of these people that you see caping for the Democrats, saying a lot of real weirdo type of shit. A lot of folks on here talking about black men or the white men of black society and saying all this stuff. We got to watch out and understand who some of these people are. We need to understand who some of these people are. For example, ladies and gentlemen, this, this one person right here. I mean, they got all types of troll accounts out here. This one person right here. This is one of these democratic shills. Hold on, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Hold on, where we at? Uh, hold on, where we at? Okay. Well, let me take this down for a minute. Y'all bear with me for one second. 
Okay. All right. Y'all bear with me. Let me put this up real quick. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm on the right thing. Damn it. Hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me pull it up over here. Hold on one second, guys. Let me pull this up. Da, 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 da. And, uh, having a little technical difficulties here. But everybody, hit that thumbs up button while you're in the room, by the way. Hit that thumbs up button while you're in the room, guys. All right. All right. This is what I want to show this, this tweet from this person here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This person right here. Jen Jackson. Okay. This person, you know, they get all of these so-called feminists saying all this greasy shit. White women and black men have it both ways. They can act as oppressor and or be oppressed. Black men may be victimized by racism, but sexism allows them to act as exploiters and oppressors of women. Bell hooks, black women taught us. And the same fool, wait till I tell you it was actually black women who ended slavery. Y'all wouldn't know justice, what justice was if it wasn't for us. Okay, so you see these people, this is the Democratic Shields. This is uh, one of these Negroes that they give all types of book deals to. And they launch these niggas online to attack black society. Um, talking that dumb shit, trying to create that gender divide. You understand? The name of the game is to create a gender divide. That's the name of the game. Now that person, Jen, I did some more research on that person. And I want y'all to notice something about these folks. That Jen person is actually a man. That's a transgender dude. That Jen person is a dude. That's a man. You understand? And that's another thing. A lot of these folks, these weird people that you see with these blue dots caping for Kamala and working for the Democrats, a lot of these women are actually trans dudes, but they don't tell you that. They're just tethering as women. You understand? There's a lot of them doing that. It's a lot of these trans dudes who are talking as if they are women online and they didn't got the filters and all this stuff. So, and they're saying all of this crazy stuff. The black woman, this, y'all be mad at us black women. They ain't, these are dudes. These are trans dudes saying all of this crazy stuff, trying to represent black women. And like I told people, it's always people who are either immigrants or sexual intersectionalists trying to act as the representatives of foundational black American women. So I want my foundational black American women to start speaking out against that. Y'all are going to have to say, hey, all of these crazy folks saying all of this crazy shit, they don't represent us. Y'all are going to have to start speaking out against that. Y'all say stuff in private, but y'all have to stop letting all these weirdos represent you or profess to represent you. See, we, brothers, we can say, hey, this nigga over here, this nigga don't represent us. We can say, hey, man, this, that nigga don't represent us. See, that's the thing. We got to start calling these folks out who are talking crazy, who are supposed to be our representatives. Niggas just saying weird stuff. No, you don't represent us. You're not my representative. You don't represent our needs. You are a sexual intersectionalist. You are prioritizing laying up with a damn white man. You dig? And a lot of these cats out here, they prioritize white sexual access. And this is why they get elevated. White people know who to elevate. They know who to prop up. And they've been trying to troll my page hard. They've been trying to troll my page extra hard because, you know, they look at me as being an influencer out here. And a lot of the Negroes out here who are supposed to be there bought and paid for um, representatives that they're going to invoke in the black society, that's falling flat. Nobody's really listening to them. People are listening to us over here because they know that we're telling the truth. And I put up something that went viral. Well, I put up a few things that's went viral, that's gone viral this week. Um, 
I put this quote up, and I said, I'm not voting this Tuesday because I'm putting together a commission of people to get together and study the potential benefits of voting. And boy, some of the Democratic shields got very mad at that, but I had to check them. You can't get mad at that. What's wrong with studying? What's wrong with studying potentially voting? Okay? See, we need a study for that. Now, we're not going to vote this Tuesday, but what we're going to do, we're going to get a plebiscite. We'll get a plebiscite together, and we're going to study if we should potentially vote. And boy, that tweet went viral on Twitter, on Instagram. Oh, damn it. Why we got to study to vote? Well, we don't need to study nothing. Well, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, we do. Why we need, why we going to study? We need to study that. If you're going to study it, study it after y'all vote. No. No, no, no. We're going to study voting. I'm not against voting. I just want to study it. No, that's some bullshit. No, 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 no. Because when we ask for reparations, you told us that we're going to study reparations. That's what H.R. 40 is, right? I'll throw it right back to them. H.R. 40 is them for 30 years. How long has that H.R. 40 been floating around where they're talking about where we're going to study reparations? Okay. Hey, we need reparations. Well, we got H.R. 40, niggas. We're, we're studying it. Okay, well, we're going to study voting. We're studying voting, too. We're just going to study it. We're, we're just like you. We, we get it. We're going we're gonna to take a page out of your playbook. You're studying tangibles. Well, I'm going to study about voting. So they can't say shit. You can run and... and, and Blabber your mouth all you want. We're doing the same thing you're doing. We're giving you that same energy. We're giving you that same energy. Family, this thing is real out here. We're not playing games with this, folks. Look, a lot of the black folks that you see out here talking about voting, knowing that we're not going to get no tangibles, it's a lot of black folks out here knowing that we're not going to get anything out of it. And they're perfectly fine with that. Hold on. Hold on. A lot of folks are perfectly fine with that. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to find something. But a lot of folks are still out here talking about voting. A lot of folks are still talking about going out here voting. Hold on one second. I'm trying to find shit while I'm talking. Hold on one second. And uh, where we at? Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to find some while I'm talking. Hold on one second. I should have had this earlier, but I tried to do a whole bunch of things. Uh, hold on one second. Da, da, da. Hold on one second. I'm trying to find something. But like I said, a lot of folks, they know we're not going to get anything. So a lot of niggas just want to go out here and vote for clout. See, when white people vote, a lot of times, for the most part, white people are very secretive about how they vote. A lot of white people are very secretive about how they vote. They're, they, um, Dave Chappelle had a joke about that. Uh, white people don't like to tell you who they voted for. You know? A lot of people who are in the white community, they don't like to sit up and tell you who they voted for. But black folks, on the other hand, they go to vote just so they can brag about them voting and who they voted for. When you see all these... I voted stickers. These are black people. A lot of black people love getting on social media with their I voted sticker because they know that they can get temporary approval from white people. 
A lot of black people like the fact that white people are giving them temporary approval. They're giving you a thumbs up. They're giving you a proverbial pat on the head. Y'all get on there with your I voted sticker and a bunch of white folks like your picture. Ooh, I am somebody. I'm a part of the community. You're doing this shit to get white clout. Clout from white people. And that's good enough for a lot of you low self-esteem niggas. It ain't good enough for me. I want to be more strategic with this thing. See, that's good enough for a lot of y'all niggas, y'all. Long as a white person gives you a little fake props, acknowledge you, you're perfectly fine with that. You dig? I ain't with all that. Let me tell you something. A lot of these Negroes that you see, and most of the Negroes, and I say this again, the most of the black people you see who are still caping for Biden and Kamala is black, LGBT, sexual intersectionalist, boule Negroes, immigrant Negroes, Negroes with low self-esteem or daddy issues. A lot of Negroes who really hate black society. And this is the thing, guys. When you talk about Biden's record and Kamala's record that is so anti-black and Biden's years and decades of anti-blackness, and you see these Negroes still making excuses, you, what they're trying to tell you is they agree with Biden doing all the shit he did to black people. You, I want y'all to understand that. Even one of my listeners, we called her, she was caping for Kamala. One of my biracial listeners, she know who she is. I was doing an Instagram Live, and she was talking about, oh, she's team Kamala, all oh, Kamala's the shit. Oh, I love me Kamala. I said... I mean, what do you like about Kamala? Kamala's not been a friend of black society. No, Kamala's the shit. She went to an HBCU. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And I said, but Kamala, I mean, she has a very bad record of locking a lot of brothers up. And then the sister slipped up. Well, some of them deserve it. Ooh. Then she tried to clean it up, but that shit slipped out. And a lot of Negroes, they feel like that. A lot of Negroes feel like Kamala Harris did the right thing locking niggas up. That's what they're not telling you guys. That's why niggas want to argue with you with all of that. You must be a Trump supporter. All of that is a goddamn deflection. When you say, hey, Kamala's, her record was real janky with black folks. Man, you, you know, like you vote for Trump. That's a deflection. What they really want to say is, yeah, nigga, I'm glad she locked y'all niggas up because I can't stand you. I'm glad Biden, all them niggas had the three strike law and that 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 jail locking niggas up. I, I'm glad because I don't like you niggas. I want y'all niggas to be locked up. Because I don't like my family and I don't like you. You dumb niggas remind me of my family. This is how some of these, these folks think. These sexual intersectionalists. They don't like their families. They don't like themselves. And they don't like your ass. If it ain't white, it ain't right. They like Kamala because they want to be in Kamala's position. They want to be somewhere where they can deny their blackness. See, Kamala Harris can deny her blackness, what, what blackness she may or may not have, because there's no paperwork showing that that woman has ever identified as being black. Her daddy don't, and her mama's, her mama's identified as Caucasian. You understand? They're black political. She's black politically. But a lot of these... Democratic shields for the Democrats, these shields, they like the fact that she can step away from her blackness because they don't like black society. They like That's what they like. Let me tell you what they like about Kamala. Who would like Kamala? What would you actually like about a Kamala fucking Harris? Her record on black women is shitty. Her record on black men is shitty. What would you, who would like something about Kamala Harris? Just think about that. White people don't really give a shit about it, especially white women. White women don't give a fuck about no Kamala Harris. They don't give a shit about no Kamala Harris. So who would like Kamala Harris? Immigrants? These non-white immigrants would like her, but it ain't enough of them to really get her in the White House. And a lot of self-hating Negroes who wish they could claim East Indian 
and then lay up with a white zaddy. She got her a zaddy. That's the that's the thing. See, they're appealing to that Olivia Pope loving crowd, you know. See, they want a zaddy just like her. See, those are the things they can identify with. They don't like black society. They don't like black society at all. And this is why, you know, a lot of us are rejecting that. But let me tell you something. We're, we're going to have to be real about some things. A lot of these sexual intersectionalists, especially a lot of the, the Negro LGBT crowd, especially the studs, because a lot of these so-called feminists, a lot of them are trying to get access to, to white women. A lot of them are non-foundational tethers who are trying to get access to white women. And one thing that those tethered studs really dislike, they, they cannot stand an alpha black male. They cannot stand a black man who's an alpha male. They hate that. Because, see, they like white zaddy. And they have to protect white zaddy. See, they're like the plantation mammies. So they want to come over and be substitute plantation mammies to protect white zaddy at all costs. So the, the plantation male who's trying to rise up off the plantation, oh, no, that nigga's going to cause trouble. Oh, that nigga's going to cause good trouble. So the mammies got to check the... The, the runaway bucks fast and, and then try to break them. See, they got to try to break them. We're going to get real heavy tonight, guys. We're going to get heavy. See, they got to break those niggas. This is why the Democrats and all of these folks always prop up sassy, moist dudes, the white Leftist media always prop up sassy moistness. Speaking of that, ladies and gentlemen, for Halloween, this was Lil Nas X, guys. Lil Nas X sat up here and dressed up like Nicki Minaj, put some Photoshop titties on himself. This is Lil Nas X being Nicki Minaj. See, this is what they like. This is what they like. Trying to neutralize black society, guys, and feminize. Neutralize and feminize. We're gonna get deep with this concept in the buck breaking movie, guys. We got let's look at history and why they're so desperate to put these buck broken black men out here. You know, you got black men out here who are part of the K hive, who are out here being sassy and trying to shame people for Kamala. Most of these Negroes are very moist, okay? That's not to disparage. A lot of these niggas are moist. Yeah, that nigga, Lil Nas X is an industry plant. He knows it. And by the way, we put this joke up. Let me put this joke up on Instagram. How this, this is a clip saying how some of, how some of y'all dudes look, hold on, how some of y'all dudes look voting leaving the voting booth without having a black agenda. This is how certain niggas are looking. This is how y'all walking out the voting booth, guys, right here. That's that's some of you niggas. That's how y'all walking out the voting booth, slinging that bussy in a circle, nigga. You voting without an... That's what they want you to look like right there. When you voting without an agenda, that's you doing the bussy walk. All right? But listen... We gotta get deep here. We gotta understand how this game works. They've been trying to feminize black males ever since slavery, but really they kicked it up after the 1960s. See, in the 1960s, you had a lot of alpha males out here. They had to do something about that. You had a lot of black men in the 1960s stepping up, being leaders and fighting against white supremacy. They, we, we can't have. They said, we can't have that. We can't have these black men acting as leaders. We got to neutralize that. In the 1960s, there were a lot of riots. A lot of riots in the 1960s. And they said, hey, that 
masculine, strong, black male leadership energy, we got to do something about that. We got to do something about it. So after the 1960s, they had to throw the feminism game out there real heavy. Also what they did, they started throwing interracial sex images out there real heavy with those 70s movies. And I talked about this before. When you looked at movies in the 70s, all those black exploitation movies had interracial sex themes. They do that now. Let's get heavy. In the last, I would say, 20 years, when you look at movies now with black male stars in it, what they do, you notice they always have an immigrant Hispanic in there as the, the lead with the black male in order to make them equivalent to each other. They're equal minorities. If you look at most movies with a black male star, Will Smith, almost all his movies, even Denzel, they'll have a, a Hispanic immigrant woman as their love interest. Yeah? Making black people synonymous with immigrants. Yeah? Using that form of interracial sex where, where white people can be comfortable with it. See, if it's an Anglo white woman, they might feel a certain way. Yeah, Fast and Furious. All these movies. Just, just go down the line. Just go down the line. All these movies with black male stars, they'll have a... Ava Mendez, she's been the star. Remember all about the Benjamins? Ava Mendez was in that too. Yeah. Hitch, the movie Hitch, all of these movies. Hell, even some of the... A lot of television shows, even the new Power show, they got Mary J. Blige. Look at her character. Her character, she got a, white, a, a Hispanic husband... And a Hispanic side nigga. So they got her being a, 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 a bed wench for two Hispanics in that. Yeah. Getting the bad boy movies, all that stuff. All that stuff. They make it, they make that synonymous. They make black people synonymous with these immigrants. In the last bad boy movie, they had them in Mexico, remember? They had them all up in Mexico. You dig? They make them synonymous so that they can ultimately replace. We're going to make you equal, and then once we make you equal, we'll elevate the other person over you. We got to watch how the game is played. We got to watch how this game is played. Think about that. When you look at a lot of movies, they'll always have black person up there with Hispanics. Even with the show Empire, they were doing that. They had Cookie with the Hispanic dude. All of these shows, they had that. Even hell, even in the first power, Ghost was with Angela. She was Hispanic. Yeah? So that's the thing. Yeah? And they started doing that with J-Lo and Wesley Snipes and uh, The Money Train. Remember that movie? Hell, they, they were doing that early on with Spike Lee and um, Rosie Perez and Do the Right Thing. They were having that theme. They started that in the, the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, yeah, we, we're going deep here. There's a reason why they do that. They've been working on this for a long time. We got to understand how the propaganda works. Training Day, of course. Like I said, um, American Gangster, all, damn near all of Denzel's movies, they have him with the Hispanic lead woman. Yeah? It's real heavy. Yeah, and they had him cheating on his wife, his black wife, with the Hispanic side piece. It's real heavy. Yeah? But we got to understand how the dominant society, see, they... They slow roast our ass. They try to slow cook and put this stuff out there to kind of neutralize us. You don't want to show too many black men and black women in strong, healthy relationships with each other. They don't like to show that. And they don't like to show a black man protecting his black family. You know, they don't like to show that. Because, see, that's dangerous. 
That's the image that they don't want out there. Family, we have to understand how the dominant society, they like to get collective revenge. See, they understand how certain things might lead to the empowerment of us. Whenever they bring something to us, we always have to question it. And whenever they try to undermine something we're doing, we that means we're on the right track. You, you understand? Whenever we make progress, they go into overtime trying to find ways to undermine it. And if they can't do it right then, they'll take their time. See, we got to understand how white supremacy is. They will take their time to undermine or get vengeance on us. You understand? They know how to get collective revenge because they understand that people's DNA, the, experience that, the experiences that you go through, that becomes a part of your DNA and that can be passed down through your DNA to your offspring. So your offspring is getting watched, you know? They watch your offspring, they watch your children, just like with Malcolm X's children. Notice how his children kept getting targeted? They, they're looking at that offspring. Malcolm's children were getting targeted. His son got killed out there in Mexico. Look at how people's children, Tupac's mother, you know, she was a, a part of the Panther 21, and they monitored Tupac most of his life. Tupac was on the FBI list. His aunt was Asada Shakur. Aunt or godmother is one or the other. But they've been, they monitored Tupac for years. They understand how certain societies who are known for turning up, they know how to watch out for their offspring. And certain coons, they know how to elevate their offspring. When they see the John Lewis's and all of these people out here, people who have a history of cooning, they assume, okay, this person taught their, their children cooning. So we'll elevate their children. Yeah? We will elevate their children to a certain degree. But let me tell you something. There's certain black folks that they watch out for. I want y'all to notice in... in, in Florida, places like Florida, Texas, and Southern California, they keep their eyes on the black people, okay? They do it all over, but particularly Florida, Texas, and California. Some other places too. Remember, I, be, I was telling you guys about the Seminoles, the black Seminoles down there in Florida. Now, the black Seminoles down there in Florida, they killed a lot of white people, okay? And they actually got their freedom. Yeah, Herschel, that's a great example. Herschel Walker was a coon all of his life. Look at his son. Look at that moist coon son of his. You think? Know? Herschel Walker has cooning in his genes. He done soaked up all that coon juice and passed it right down to his buck-broken son. But down there in Florida, guys, you have the black Seminoles. Many of them remained. Many of them remained in, in, in Florida. Many of them left. But that energy of the black Seminoles, where they killed all of those white people down there, that's never talked about. And we're doing a movie about that too, by the way. We're gonna be that's gonna be my next movie after we finish editing Buck Breaking. We're gonna break that down. But down there in Florida, man, they they really don't like to talk about how those black Seminoles killed all the white people down there, those slave owners, the people in the military. You, you dig? They don't like to talk about that. Let me tell you some truth be told, a lot of parts of Florida is named after white people who got killed. I told y'all about Dade County, but there's more. Um, one of the, the white men who got killed by the, the black Seminoles down there when the, the black Seminoles were raiding 
different forts and different white areas killing the white people. There's one guy named Orlando Reeves, who may or may not have been working for the military, but he saw the Black Seminoles coming, and then he alerted some of the other white troops, and then they slaughtered his ass. And they ended up naming Orlando, Florida after him, Orlando Reeves. He got killed in the Seminole War. A lot of these folks got killed by the Black Seminoles, and they named a lot of areas in Florida after white people who got killed. Duval County, he was another white man who was fighting in the Seminole War. You know, Jacksonville is named after um, Andrew Jackson, who was fighting in the Seminole War. Yeah. So in Florida, they've always had a revenge thing against the black people. Notice a lot of significant riots or, or racial massacres that happen around, you know, the early 1900s happened in Florida. Remember, Rosewood, Rosewood, Florida, remember how they would come up, the white supremacists would come up with little ways to attack black neighborhoods and kill all the black people and run them off? That was a way for them to get revenge, collective revenge, because they never forgot what the Moors did to them. Not the Moors, but what the Seminoles did to them. They never forgot. And they've been, they sit back and, and bide their time waiting to get revenge collectively through their descendants because they're dis they, they remind each other. That's why I say they name these little towns after these white people who got their asses toe up so that they can remember. And down there in Florida, they do reenactments of the Dade County Massacre of Dade where Dade got fucked up by the Black Seminoles. They do reenactments so they can remember. So they pass it down. We're going to have to get these niggas one day, avenge our, our ancestors' death because of these niggas, just like with Haiti, of course. With Haiti, they've been trying to punish Haiti ever since the um, the revolution. Yeah, the Akoi. Yes, the Akoi massacre. Uh, didn't the Akoi massacre happen in 1920? That's another place, Akoi, Florida. I think this is the anniversary year. Either It was either 1920 or 1921, Akoi. They had another massacre down there where... They just started attacking the black people and ran them out of their neighborhood, killing about 50 to 60 black people, ran them out. This was 1920, 1921, Ocoee, Florida. Again, collective revenge. They come up with some cockamamie reason, and a lot of the black people said, hey, they planned this shit. This was something they planned. They just came up with some bullshit reason to just attack us and run us out of here and take our land yeah, this collective revenge. We this is why we have to look at Tulsa, Oklahoma. What was that really about? Was that collective revenge? Remember, Tulsa, Oklahoma. During the Trail of Tears, many of those people were black, coming from Florida, going into Oklahoma, Oklahoma Indian Territory. A lot of people don't tell you a lot of those folks were black Seminoles going into Oklahoma. There's a town in Oklahoma, Wawoka, Wawoka, Oklahoma, that was founded by the black Seminoles. John Horse and those guys founded a town there. And that's another thing. Black people were going around settling cities and towns all over the United States. A lot of cities are founded actually by black people. I know Buffalo is. Chicago was founded by a black man. Um, a lot of little bitty towns. Um, Los Angeles, it was a, a black family who came in from Mexico. They were living down there working with the Spanish. So they came up to Southern California, founded Los Angeles. You understand? But look at Black Wall Street and look at Tulsa. A lot of the Seminoles, the black Seminoles were out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they went out there after they killed all those white people down in Florida. And they made a deal with Jessup. General Jessup said, okay, we'll give you your freedom. Just move west. Just get up out of Florida. So many of them went down to Oklahoma. They were staying on reservations in Oklahoma. Many of them you know, formed their own communities elsewhere. Oklahoma was like an outlaw place, okay? 
Oklahoma was like an, uh, an outlaw place. Hell, remember Bass Reeves? Bass Reeves, the black man who became the inspiration for the Lone, Lone Ranger? Bass Reeves was living in Arkansas territory. Bass Reeves, owner, he was a slave. Bass Reeves was a slave. His owner was a legislator for the Texas Senate. I, I, he was some kind of politician, a big time politician in Texas. I know that. But Bass Reeves, he beat his owner up and just said, fuck it. I'm about to be free. And just he whooped his owner's ass one day and left and went to Oklahoma and lived with the Seminoles out there. You see, a lot of runaways were going and living among the Seminoles. But yeah, Bass Reeves whooped his owner's ass and went to Oklahoma and just chilled out with the Seminoles. Yeah, he whooped his owner's ass. We talked about that in one of the Hidden Colors films. And then he became a lawman. And he got like 3,000 fugitives. This dude was, this dude wasn't a damn joke and he never got hurt. Yeah? Yeah? This nigga never got hurt. Bass Reeves caught 3,000 bandits and never got hurt. Killed 14 of them. So this dude was out here killing folks. And they never forgot that. So when you got these Seminoles and you got Bass Reeves and these black folks out here in Oklahoma, after they done killed all the white folks in Florida, now you got black folks out here in Oklahoma chilling. And not only are they chilling going into the 1900s, now these niggas are prosperous. You understand? Now, after all these black folks killed these white people down in Florida, they got their freedom, went to Oklahoma, and then all of a sudden, you turn around and these niggas become millionaires. They got all of the, they got a damn black Wall Street. Wait a minute. No, enough is enough. Uh, enough is enough. We, let's, we got to do something about this shit. We got to look at the mentality of the white supremacist. They get collective revenge. And they got revenge memories. And let me tell you something. Here's the thing. So do we. We got revenge memories. That's why they like to feminize niggas so that we don't tap into them. See, they want you to tap into some buck-breaking memories. They want you switching around trying to be a substitute woman, trying to get you a white zaddy. See, they don't want us tapping into some of those damn uprising Nat Turner memories. They don't want us getting into some of those Seminole memories. Because remember, the Seminoles not only went to Oklahoma, the Seminoles went down into Texas. They went into Mexico. So they were going back and forth from Mexico and Texas. There's a lot of black folks in Texas with that Seminole lineage. Okay? A lot of black people in Texas got that Seminole energy. That's why certain niggas in Texas you don't fuck with. Micah Johnson. There's a little old Micah Johnson spirit running around Texas. Micah Johnson ain't the only one. There's some niggas in Texas you don't really fuck with. Niggas who's with the business. Also, a lot of black folks from Los Angeles, who in Los Angeles, their families come from Texas. Freeway Rick is one of them. A lot of black people's families out here in L.A., their family came directly from Texas. Yeah? So y'all better understand that energy don't go nowhere. Yeah, that, that Chris Dorner energy. Yeah? That energy doesn't go nowhere. Let's go back to Miami. Even Miami. Let me tell you something. Where are my Miami people? You got any Miami people? Who's from Miami in here? Where's my Miami people? Yeah. Yeah, Jay Prince and those guys. Yeah, you got folks down there in Texas who don't fuck around at all. Yeah. But where are my Miami people? Where are my Miami people? Because listen, 
that Seminole energy stayed in Miami for a long time. Family down in Miami, they had one of the most significant riots in a long time. See, after the 1960s, a lot of the riots kind of slowed down a little bit. But in 1980, there was a riot down in Liberty City, I think. I think the riot started in Liberty City. Yes, the Houston riots. Remember that I talked about that before. We talked about that in Hidden Colors 5. The Houston riots, they fucked white people up down there in, in Houston. Them niggas took to the streets and started giving white people the business in, in Houston. That's the, one of the only times that more white people got killed than black people in a riot. This happened in Houston. I'm telling y'all, some of the most significant riots happened in those three areas, down in Florida, Texas, and Los Angeles. Now, down in Miami, there was a brother named, I think it's McDuffie. It was a brother who got killed, a motorcycle. He was on a motorcycle. He got killed by the police. McDuffie, the McDuffie riots, yeah. In 1980, was it Liberty City? It was it Liberty City? Was it Pork and Beans? But this brother got killed, and they acquitted the race soldiers who did it. These niggas in Miami turned up so hard, it scared the entire country because that riot was very different from a lot of other riots in 1980 in Miami. In Overtown, yeah. Arthur McDuffie, yeah. They did all types of studies after that riot. Because what happened was, this wasn't like in the 1960s. It wasn't just property riots. In the 60s, most of the time, when people would riot, they would bust windows and, you know, they'd break in a store and get electronic equipment and all this old shit. Even now, when you see riots now, niggas running into Walmart, going in there getting a bunch of shoes, <laughs> Bucking your eyes. But that Miami riot was different. The Miami riots, niggas was targeting white people. Them niggas were targeting white people with no fear. They were snatching white people out of cars, killing them. They were snatching white people out of trucks, stomping them to death. And one white woman, they made her crash into a wall. They burned her car up with her in it. Them niggas out there turned all the way up. Them niggas in Miami went to the main police precinct with the police in there, start busting on them, and then burn that bitch down. That scared the shit out of white people because when them niggas ran up in there and him the police up in the precinct, they were like, well, if them niggas do that to the police, what are they going to do to us? My God. It wasn't about shoes and all of this dumb shit. The brothers down there were targeting people. That's the thing that scared them. See, they don't mind a little property, you stealing electron. They don't mind that. But when niggas start taking it to another level and start catching them civilians, oh, that scares the shit out of people. You know? Them niggas showed out down in Miami. In, the, in 1980. So they had all types of commissions to study and they had to see, okay, what made these niggas do this? And is this shit going to spread? That's a lot of the Rockefellers were forming commissions. They threw big money into trying to find out, okay, what can we do to stop this? Right after 1980 in Miami, what did we see? And also in Los Angeles, what did we see? we saw the rise of rock cocaine. Ex easily accessible cocaine. We saw it in Miami and we saw it in Los Angeles simultaneously. We saw it in both places. We had to dissipate that energy. They said, we got to dissipate this energy. We got to get these niggas focused on something else. We got to get these niggas strung out. Yeah, that's why those drugs, right after that, well, the, the cocaine cowboys and all that shit, the drugs came through in Miami heavy and cheap. Also, right after that, when they start seeing all of the, them brothers turn up like that, that scared the shit out of folks. 
that's when they start getting all of those Rex 84 camps available. Like, okay, if these niggas get real busy, we're going to have to put them somewhere. So they start getting those Rex 84, those readiness preparedness camps, Rex 84 camps all over the country. But don't let that scare you, though. Don't let that scare you. Because if some shit go down, a lot of them will, if cats decide to launch guerrilla warfare, nigga, some of those ancestral memories will start popping back up. Yeah, the Ronald Reagan plan, of, of course. Yeah? Huh? But they knew what they were doing, you know, flooding the neighborhood with, with drugs to keep people strung out. And, and also, they started using you know, drug propaganda. They, they started making drugs and drug use look exotic. Then they came up with shows like Miami Vice. They made the dope game and, you know, the, the nightlife look real sleek and exotic. Then they had Scarface. Remember, right after that, you know, they had that Muriel Boatlift. Then they had the movie Scarface. Getting high and, and black folks gravitated towards that, see? This is what we gravitated to. We gravitated to, to Scarface. We wanted that. Yeah, he's getting high, fucking white women, got all this money, living like a gangster. That's why we, we love that. We gravitated towards that Scarface imagery. There's a reason why they had that down in Miami like that. Yeah? There's a reason why. And we still use references to Scarface, the, the movie now, to, with a lot of stuff. So they knew. They, they had to get our shit right. They, they were trying to get our minds right. Now, that will last temporarily. Now, in Los Angeles, in 92, we tapped back into our ancestral memories and turned back up again. You understand? They don't like riots like that. See, they don't like riots like the ones in Miami and the ones in L.A., that 92 riot, because the, in 92, the focus wasn't getting no damn sneakers and all that shit. The focus was targeting people. That's the thing that scares them more than anything. When you start, when niggas raise up in the streets and start taking lives, see, that's real warfare. They don't like that. They don't like that. They don't mind niggas out here getting nigga trinkets. And if you look at the riots in L.A., and look, I was there. So I saw everything up close and personal. But if you look at the riots and look at the footage, most of the people you see stealing shit or taking things from stores were Hispanics. No, you don't see too many black people. Footage from the L.A. riots, you don't see too many black people running in stores, getting stuff. Now, there was niggas getting what they needed to get. There was, you know, there was dudes getting all that. But they were focused on other shit. You saw white people get snatched out of cars on live TV. That scares white people to this day. Those images on Florence and Normandy of white people getting pulled out of their cars and trucks, beat up and stomped out on live TV, those are images that haunts white society to this day. That haunts them now. You understand? Yeah, I like the show Miami Vice. It was a cool show. I liked a lot of those shows, but we just have to understand the cultural significance of this stuff. Yeah? This is why, like I said, referencing the L.A. riots when white people are getting killed out here, this is why whenever niggas turn up now, white people are right out there with you because they don't want to be the next Reginald Denny. Wait, somebody said the Koreans took them out? Nigga. Yeah, the, the Korean, yeah. The, I, the little white, the little nerdy white supremacists, they like bragging about the Korean roof shooters. That's kind of a thing now among little the little 4chan circles. They like to talk about the Koreans who were on the roof shooting looters. And I'm telling you, and I've told this many times, it wasn't black folks they were shooting. Even the Koreans admitted that. They were not shooting black folks at all, period. 
They didn't want them problems. Yeah, they might have shot some Mexicans here and there. They weren't shooting brothers. Those rooftop Koreans did not want those problems. At all. You understand? Speaking of that, you know, like I say, niggas out here do things a little bit differently. Like when Soon Jung Il, whatever that woman's name, who shot that sister, Latasha Harling, they shot the sister in the head and this white racist ass judge let the, the, the Asian lady go. You know, the community made sure that store wasn't there no more. You know, they got Soon Jadu's store up out of there. You know, this is why it confuses me. Like, down in Atlanta, recently at this Umi Sushi, there was a little anti-black racist owner who was playing the whole racially enforced dress code game where a brother went in there with some tennis shoes on, and they were like, well, you can't come in with tennis shoes. And the brother was like, okay, this white woman has tennis shoes. Then they start doing the I'm white, and I say, so, well, those are dress tennis shoes. They just start making up a bunch of shit. And then the white owner came and he was talking his little slick shit and him and the brother were about to get into it. And then from what I understand, this little immigrant ass owner who's from the Middle East somewhere, I think he's from Iran. He was running around bragging about all the rappers he know and all that. Who gives a shit? Yeah, who gives a damn? Yeah, some of y'all saw, yeah, Fashard, yeah, yeah, the Fashard guy. So I, I think some people out there protesting the um, Umi Sushi for that little sucker shit, as they should, but I don't know. Yeah, no. Look, out here in L.A., remember in Compton a couple of years ago when, I, I want to say 2018, 2000, yeah, 2018, in Compton, the sister went into a beauty supply store and got into some kind of altercation with the owner. Man, niggas went down there, put hands on the owner. Then when the police came, they put hands on the police. And now, you know, the, the owners of that store had to do a going out of business sale. And from what I understand, that store is owned, is black owned now. I think black people own it. Yeah. I think black people own that store in Compton now. He had to sell it to somebody else, a little beauty supply store. You know, niggas ain't really trying to boycott out here, per se. We're not really a boycotting type of people. You know, niggas out here, you know, it's, it's really not about a boycott. <laughs> it's about you gonna get your ass up out of here today type of vibe. Yeah. Yeah, niggas ain't about to stand out there too loud. Niggas out here ain't trying to stand outside your business with no picket sign. Yeah. Your shit just ain't gonna be there, you yeah. know. I'm just saying, I'm just I'm just talking history here. I'm just talking history. But uh <laughs> Yeah, ain't, ain't gonna really we ain't nobody trying to hear no apologies. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, your, your shit just ain't going to be there. That's just what it is. <laughs> yeah, you do some slick shit like that, it's, you, know, you might as well just go ahead and just make everything half off because you, you're going to be bouncing pretty soon. You just, you're just you going to have to go on up out of there. Make, them, make the pink oil moisturizer 3 $4. Just go and get rid of it because that shit is going to be up out of here. You, you might as well get it out <laughs> while you can. Because this shit is just going to go somewhere real left if you, you're going to try to pull some bullshit on these niggas out here. No, 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 But the thing is, man, we got to get into a, a space where we are turning up for our loved ones at least. We got to really make sure our, our offspring is good. We got to make sure our family is good. See, let's, let's be real about a lot of things. With a lot of us getting targeted by race soldiers and nothing is really being done about it, that incentivizes them 
And truth be told, there's a lot of black folks out here who don't like their offspring. I talked about that before, guys. There's a lot of black people. Let me get me a sip here. Family, there's a lot of black folks who don't like their offspring. We have, and we're going to have to be real, we have a hood rat class within our society. And these are the folks who are usually targeted. That hood rat class is usually targeted. The race soldiers know who to go take out. The race soldiers know who to take out. They know what neighborhoods to go in and start taking folks out where they're not going to get any pushback. You understand? Sometimes they slip up and they have to learn the hard way. For example, when they shot our brother out here in South Central a few months ago, they shot that brother. That was the wrong thing to do. A few weeks later, some cops out there in Compton got ambushed in retaliation and got shot in the face. You see, they had to learn the hard way. Everybody ain't going to go along with that. You understand? I'm just talking history here. I'm just talking history. A lot of folks out here, your children and your offspring, they're getting killed by race, soldier and, uh, race soldiers. And I said this on my broadcast the other day. A lot of these hood rat mammies, a lot of middle-aged hood rats, because we have to remember, uh, Dijon Kizzy, that was our brother's name. But we got to understand, a lot of these hood rats, when they get older, they become these little mammies. They're not the representation for black women, let's be clear, because I hate when they get the, the bottom of the barrel and let them become the representatives and the face of black women. No, they're not. we got to stop allowing the bottom of the barrel to become the face of black women. They are not the face of black women. They are outliers. We have to look at them as such. But when some of these older middle-aged hood rats who misraise their children when things happen to them, they look at their children as a burden. And they're almost glad that their kids get taken out. Like the situation that happened in Philadelphia last week, brother Walter, Walter Wallace got killed after his mama called the police because he was having a mental issue. And I told people, I'm suspicious of that because we're, we're in a climate right now where you call the police, you know, and somebody's not in their right mind, if somebody's flipping out and they're black, you know that these race soldiers are incentivized to come in and kill them because they're going to be rewarded. They're not going to be punished. They're going to be rewarded. So you know what's going to happen if your family member is tripping and you call them folks on them. You know that shit is going to end up left. So when you do that, I'm looking at you funny now at this point. So his mama did that move, and she ran out the house crying, oh, Lord Jesus, she throwing shit at her. Well, you knew they were going to do that. Now, after all that hollering and wailing, oh, Lord, baby Jesus, all that. They do all that showing out for one minute, and all of a sudden, you sitting up there with Benjamin Crump. We see that repeatedly. Now, this is what the family said. Walter Wallace's family came out. The family, they do not want the officers who shot him to face murder charges, the attorney said. So these niggas are already on the take, man. This is shameful. This is why I was saying what I was saying. These niggas are, they are already on the take. Already. Nigga, the body ain't even cold. There has not even been a funeral. It's time to get the bag. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen. You got a lot of hood rat Frankensteins out here. This is the Frankenstein mentality. 
This is the hood Frankenstein mentality. Let me tell you something. A lot of hood rats don't really like their children because the hood rats don't like themselves. A lot of these hood rats look at their children as something to use as a come up. Everything about the kids is a come up. I ain't got no money, I ain't got no job, I want to party and turn up. If I have a kid, I can use the kid to get Section 8. If I have a kid, I can put my phone in my child's name using my kid's Social Security. If I have a kid, I can claim them as dependents and run a little um, tax finesse. If I have a kid, I can get food stamps and an EBT card. The kid is a tool for them to live off of. A lot of people think like that. That's that old school hood rat mentality. That's just what it is. Unfortunately, that doesn't represent us in the totality, but you have a hood rat sector who has that kind of mentality. It's not really about the well-being of the kids. The kids are just another being on a plantation that they can use to get little nigger trinkets. Hell, I got this kid. I might as well get this little section eight. I got me an apartment. Okay, let me go down here with the kid and get me some EBT, get my EBT car filled up. Let me get some, some milk and all the bullshit. And then I'm going to drop them off at my mama and let my mama raise them. And then drop them off at school and let them get miseducated all day while I turn up with these niggas. And what happens, you, you use the kid as a tool you miss raise him all his life. You don't know who the damn dad is. That's why these, these fathers don't be nowhere to be found with a lot of these folks getting slaughtered because see, fathers at, on a, on, at one level, you're supposed to avenge your damn children. That's why you don't ever see too many of these fathers out here. And the few fathers you see, a, a Tatiana Jefferson down there in, in, in Texas, her father was a rider. At least he was speaking out. He was like, man, fuck money. Damn, that I won't charge this for who killed my daughter. I don't give a fuck about no money. I'm not trying to cash out. Remember, Tatiana Jefferson, all those mammies, the mammy side of her family was all trying to cash out. The dad was like, no, we got insurance. I got insurance for my daughter. I ain't with all this stupid shit. You see? So you got these mammies out here with that hood rat mentality who didn't misraise these children, half ass raised them, raised them in these environments that are hostile. They didn't really nurture them correctly. And then what happens? They grow up with mental issues because they probably had them on drugs at a young age because they didn't really want to deal with them. So they probably had them on drugs at a young age. So now they've they got all types of chemical imbalances now that they're older and they're dependent on these damn drugs, these behavioral drugs. So now you created a little Frankenstein. You understand? A lot of these hood rats then created little Frankenstein monsters that you didn't really want to raise. You just use them as a come up. And now that they're older, now that they're grown, I mean, you already got your Section 8. You're already there, so you can't get really no more EBT with the kid no more like that. So the kid becomes not your grown child, 25, 26, 27. The hood rat, who's middle age now, you don't have no more use for him. Now he becomes a debt. He becomes a burden because all the damn drugs you didn't have the schools put his ass on because you half-ass raised him. We, we're talking real. We, we're talking about a certain sector here. You created your little Frankenstein who's hostile. He's been going in and out of jail. And they got him. They got his paperwork. Once you call up and say, hey, my son, Lerone Smith is tripping. They already got his paperwork, his mug shots, so they know what to do. They're like, oh, cool, we're about to go ahead and um, get this one on up out of here and get us some bonuses from these white supremacist groups. They already know what they're going to do when they show up. Oh, this is, is going to be a good kill. 
This is going to be a great kill. Oh, we're not going to get punished for this. This nigga has a, a rap sheet a mile long, so we're going to be fully justified to just jump out the car blazing. Let's keep it a buck, guys. So now, and y'all hit the thumbs up button while I'm talking, guys. Hit the thumbs up button while I'm talking. Hit that like button. Everybody hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs up button. So now, your grown child, and he got a bunch of kids that, you know, he probably tried to dump off on you. So now your grown child becomes a burden, and then your grown child turns on you. Because your grown child has hostility towards your hood rat ass for misraising him. Just like the situation that happened with this Walter brother out there in, in Philly. I think they said he was, him and his mother was arguing and he was kind of trying to attack his mother. See, your monster that you created is turning on you. You created that. And the monster you created is turning on you. So now you got to call in the lynch mob to come in and wipe him out. So again, you can further cash out. So you can do the, oh, oh Lord Jesus. Um, but I forgive though. And I don't think these good cops should be punished now. Now, when y'all going to make out my check? That's despicable. That's a hood rat ass dirtbag mentality to have. There's nothing honorable about that and I have no respect for it. It's like Frankenstein. Family, let's look into Frankenstein, the, the character and the movie. This is what the movie Frankenstein was about. The movie Frankenstein was about a doctor who wanted to play God, but he, he wanted to create a human. The monster's name is not Frankenstein. See, this is the thing. The monster has no name. The monster never had a name. But people make the, the monster's name Frankenstein. The doctor's name Frankenstein. Yeah? The doctor's name is Frankenstein. But because the monster was a creation of him, people make the name Frankenstein synonymous with the doctor and the monster. Okay? Let's get deep with this thing. Frankenstein was a story written by a woman named Mary Shelley, who was from Britain, and her family, they wrote some racist documents because at that time, they were British. A lot of slave revolts were happening in the British colonies in Jamaica and in the Caribbean, and also, she wrote this right after the Haitian Revolution, where the, the French and the British were still shaken because of the way the Haitians went in. So she wrote this book called Frankenstein. It was based in Germany. And it was about this doctor who created this monster, went to the, 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 the cemetery and dug up a body and got a body and reanimated the body. This was an allegory towards slavery, actually. This was supposed to represent slavery, where the white supremacists, you create these monsters, and eventually these monsters will ultimately turn on you. You got these black men who are big, childlike monsters. Even if they're gentle, you never know when they'll turn on you. Family, Frankenstein, before it became a movie, Frankenstein, they made it a stage play. Okay? Frankenstein was a stage play. What people don't tell you is, before the movie, the stage play, they would portray the Frankenstein monster as a black man. Let me show you guys something. Family, this is an image from 1850. This is a stage play of Frankenstein, okay? This is an image from the 1850s. That is Frankenstein's monster. They would have him as a African man. That's how they portrayed Frankenstein in the early stage plays. He was black. They portrayed him as a black man. Okay? So I'm not whistling Dixie here. This is them. 
They portrayed him as a black man because this was an allegory to slavery. There was this fear of this monster that white supremacist society created. You created this monster. Now this monster has the potential to turn on his creator. That was the whole theme. In the movie Frankenstein in 1931, where they had Boris, Kor um, Boris Korloff, I think that's his name. They had him in green paint. It was in black and white, so you couldn't see the green paint. But they had a scene where he broke out after his, his master. His master created him. And also, Dr. Frankenstein, his, his assistant, would call him master, by the way. Don't miss none of that shit. His assistant called him master. But in the original Frankenstein 1931, when Frankenstein broke out and went out into the community, he ran into a little white girl. It was a little blonde-haired white girl. And she's like, hey, play with me. Be my friend. And Frankenstein was playing with the white girl, and they were throwing daisies in the water, and he was trying to make them float. And then he got the white girl and threw her in the water to see if she could float, and then she drowned. Okay. So then they ended up lynching, a lynch mob formed and chased down the Frankenstein monster and killed him and lynched him by burning him alive. This is what they would do in the 1930s to black people. You understand? Let me show y'all a clip of that for some of y'all who don't understand. Yeah, King Kong, that's another one that was based on really Jack Johnson. But let me show y'all a scene from the original Frankenstein movie where they actually basically lynched him. See, this is a lynch mob here. They got a lynch mob, that's Frankenstein. So they're burning him, they're about to burn him alive. Yeah, this is the old school lynching. This is 1931 when, when lynching was at an all time high. Okay? Look at the lynch mobs. Okay? So this is what they were doing to black folks. Hold on. So they burn him alive. Okay, so they're burning him up. Okay. They got a rope there. Look at the rope. There's a rope. That rope is symbolic, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm not going to... Okay, that's all I'm going to show. But yeah, they lynched him. They lynched him in the Frankenstein movie. Yeah? Now listen. Let's fast forward to modern times. Chris Dorner, who turned up out here in, in Southern California, Chris Dorner was their Frankenstein. That was the Frankenstein that they created. Chris Dorner was out here on the loose, killing police officers. He killed people that he worked with, the LAPD, because of their racism. Chris Donner was out here killing people. He was on the loose. They were looking for him. Big old black man that was created. He was a, a military guy and a cop. And how did they, how did they kill Chris Donner? They killed Chris Donner just like that. They burned Chris Donner alive. Remember that? They caught Chris Donner in a cabin somewhere in the suburbs, uh, in the outskirts of L.A., and they set a cabin on fire and burned him alive. Just like that. You then We got to understand how these white supremacists think. We got to understand how they think, family. It's real heavy. It's some real heavy shit. But a lot of these folks out here, you creating your own little Frankensteins. And then your monster turn on you. And then you want to get your monster lynched. You got to get your monster that you created. You want your monster lynched so that you can cash out. See, we can't have that mentality. That mentality has to go. That movie was 1931. That Frankenstein movie. The original story was written, I think, 1812 or something like that. Yeah. Huh? The San Bernardino Mountains, yeah. Yeah, real heavy shit. Real heavy stuff. But again, family, the basic thing, man, when we start going for tangibles, 
we have to stop being ashamed and afraid to say we need something for our agenda. We got to stop being ashamed and afraid to stand up for our group. We got to stop being ashamed and afraid to say, hey, we're not going to put the cape on for everybody else. We're going to have to start defending our loved ones. We're going to have to start protecting our families with our lives. We don't sit up and let race soldiers just keep taking out our families left and right. You better be willing to put your life on the line for your family. Is that serious? And family, don't let one group of white supremacists scare you about another group of white supremacists. All of these Trumpers driving around in trucks, that shit don't scare me. We're not afraid of that stuff. We're not afraid of that. That's not intimidating anybody. And again, I'm not going to be out of here fighting for nothing. I mean, we can handle them, folks, but I'm not going to handle them so that other groups can come over and benefit from that. We're not going to get out here and and be shamed into sacrificing ourselves for nothing. We need to save all our energy for whatever. We need to save all our energy to look out for our own group. Not none of these damn boule tethered Negroes. Speaking of boule guys, I try not to be petty. But Roland Martin, again, I, I try my best not to go in on Roland. I really do. I Trust me, I do. I saw a post that Roland put up, guys. I saw a post that Roland put up, and he put up something. Look look at this. Hold on. Roland was like, be -de -be -de -de. when I wear athletic gear while flying, I always get asked if I play, be -de -be if I play sports because he had on his ring, some kind of his alpha ring. Today, I got on a beep, beep, all black votes matter gear and a guy behind me in first class. Beep, 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 beep. He had to let you know he's in first class, by the way. Um, my alpha ring, beep, beep, beep. he asked me, is that a Super Bowl ring? Beep, beep, beep. It always come back to sports. Family, Roland said people mistake him for an athlete. What the fuck sports do people think Roland Martin plays, guys? What 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 sports what sports do what what athlete do they think what sports do they think Roland Martin play, guys? Really? Nigga, come on. A female bo a volleyball player, a retired WNBA player. What do what do people what sports do people think Roland Martin's ass play, guys? A chocolate sumo wrestler. What sports do people think Roland goddamn Martin plays, guys? Roland Martin about this big. What sp what ball player, nigga? Just because you. Shaped like a ball don't mean you play ball, nigga. What sports field do people think you in, dude? Come on. Nigga. <laughs> a food taster is not a sport, nigga. What sports do people think you in, nigga? Bowling, a bowling champion. What sports, Roland? Come on, bro. Nigga. Nigga, what don't nobody think you no damn athlete, nigga. <laughs> nigga, don't nobody think you a goddamn athlete. You can't be a horse jockey. You crush the horse. Nigga, what what sports are you trying to is that a Super Bowl ring, nigga? What team would you play for? With your little old ass, stocky ass, running out there, rolling around the field, nigga. What team would you play for, dude? <laughs> the Buffalo Biscuits? What team would you play for, dude? Come on. The jokes write themselves sometimes. 
Nigga, it's not the Super Bowl, nigga. It's a burrito bowl from fucking Chipotle. No, they didn't say Super Bowl, nigga. <laughs> they did not say Super Bowl. They said Soup Bowl, nigga. It's not a Super Bowl. The Soup Bowl, nigga. You just look like you look like you ate some fucking gumbo. It's not Super Bowl, nigga. Soup Bowl. <laughs> That's what they ask you, nigga. Did you just eat some, uh, a Super Bowl of chili? Stop it, Roland. The Super Bowl. Stop. Good Lord. Anyway, look. God damn, man. <laughs> Say the L.A. Yams. <laughs> the Miami Meat. Not the Miami Heat. This nigga plays for the Miami Meat. <laughs> he played for the Dallas Crab Legs. Not the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Crab Legs. Anything with some food. <laughs> He played for the Cleveland Brown Stew Chickens. Hell out of here. The fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Nigga. Oh, nobody believe you played <laughs> for the, da <laughs> the Dallas Cows. Man, 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 man. You know, speaking of speaking of sports, you know, and by the way, guys, uh, we got the sale going on for one day only. We got the sale one day only. One day only sale, guys. We got the one more day left for the Foundation of Black American flag sale, the package. You're going to get that beautiful flag back there. You're going to get the um, Ogun Juice spray, the Ogun Juice mask, the Ogun Juice socks, the um, the book, Avoid the Machine book, and the 1804 DVD. You get all of those six things for 49 bucks. The sale ends tomorrow. So it's in the L.A. Bakers. <laughs> Not the L.A. Bakers. <laughs> uh not the L.A. Bakers. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man, this nigga. He say the Cleveland Brownies. <laughs> Not the Philly cheesesteaks. He played he play for the Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> the Tampa Bay Nachos. <laughs> The Washington pork skins, uh, hilarious. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man, the Sacramento Burger King. <laughs> man, man, man. He played for the Boston Celeries. <laughs> Not that he played for the Boston Celery. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> Say the Georgia Peach Cobblers. <laughs> Man, 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 this nigga. <laughs> Everybody's clowning Roland's football team. What what team he played for? <laughs> you know, I, when I was down in New, in, in um, New Orleans, you know, I learned something very interesting. You know, the um, the um, being on those plantations out there, I was chopping it up with folks. And on those plantations out there, you know, the French 
were were dominant out there. And um, they had a royal sign. It was a sign that they had. And what's the name of that? What is the name of that thing? The Flor de the Flor de Ris, something something like that. I forget. Where my my New Orleans people? Because that sign is now used. This French symbol is used for the um, New Orleans Saints logo. The New Orleans Saints logo. The Flor de Ris. I think that's the name, right? The new the um, um, New Orleans Saints logo. That's on the helmets of the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Someone said, <laughs> roll and play for the Washington Gizzards. <laughs> Not the Washington Gizzards. Yeah, the Floor de Lise. Yeah, Floor de Lise. Yeah, I, I was getting the names wrong. The Floor de Lise. That's the name of it, the Floor de Lise. Yeah. The Floor de Lise. Yes, the floor de lease. Um, that sign, the floor de lease, that sign, the, the floor de lease was a sign that the French would brand that on runaway slaves. Down there in Louisiana, when black people would run away from those plantations, they would brand them with the floor de lease signal. They were branded on their face or they were branded on their shoulders to let folks know that that was a runaway. Yeah, the Floor de Lis was a symbol to brand slaves. Yep. That was the symbol to brand the slaves down there in uh, Louisiana. That symbol is now branded on black football players' helmets. It's very interesting. Floor de Lis, yes. Yep. That's That's branded on them now. That's real heavy. That's real, real heavy. Real heavy. But um, yeah, we gotta know about these symbols. Yeah, we gotta know about these symbols. Yeah, we gotta know about these symbols. Y'all still clowning rolling with his football teams. <laughs> well, you say rolling plays for the New England pastries. Rolling play for the Green Bay snackers. Rolling plays defense for the Green Bay snackers. <laughs> oh God. When Roland said that, nigga. <laughs> He played for the Tennessee Titties. <laughs> Man. That nigga played for the Jacksonville Joloff Rice. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> this nigga gotta go. <laughs> anyway, let me get up out of here, man. Uh, anyway, guys, I got to get out of here. So go to, again, go to officialfba.com to get that package. Officialfba.com. Officialfba.com. Officialfba.com to get that package, guys. And go to hiddencolorsfilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1 through 5. And y'all have a good night, man. I'm out. Y'all be good.